Today on the Basketball Manitoba podcast, we have Jared Ogobemi Jackson. Jared is a graduate of Garden City Collegiate, where he led the team to back to back 4A provincial titles. He was voted the number one player in the province in both his grade 11 and 12 year. He is a former Basketball Manitoba provincial team member, playing for four summers with the program. He went on to play at the University of Calgary, where he played for five years. There, he was a second team All Canadian was Canada West All-Star two times. He finished his career in the top 10 in Calgary Dinos history in rebounds, field goals, free throws made, three-pointers made, assists, games played, games started, minutes played, free throw percentage, assist to turnover ratio, and his third all-time in points and number one in steals. After his college career, he went on to play pro and has played in Denmark, Finland, Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, and is currently playing in France. He has been recognized as Guard of the Year in Portugal, Guard of the Year and Import Player of the Year in the Netherlands. In this past season in Denmark, his team won the league championship, and he was recognized as FIBA Europe Cup International Tournament All-Star. Jared, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, so <laughs> I'm doing your, I'm going over your bio, and I'm like, I, Looking at all this, hey, he played here, he did this. I mean, I was always, I was around when you played, obviously, here at Garden yeah. City. I got to see you, you know, when you when you were a young a young man, uh, well, I said a, a, a teenager at the time, yeah. um, doing your thing. Uh, one thing I do remember very, 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 very vividly is one of the places you like to operate, because you were a mid-range guy, like your, your mid-range game was like just smooth, yeah. but you would just like break guys down and you'd be like inside the three point line, but you'd be setting guys up mm -hmm. and just hitting them with crossovers and you just hit that jumper. Yeah. Um, but I say all that just to say that, like I'm going over your bio and I'm looking at the stats and I always pull up, I found this, there's this really cool website that has all the Canada or the um, U sports stats. Okay. So I went to go look, I'm like, Oh, let's go see what, what's, what stats Jarrett's, you know, obviously I know you played, you had a great career. Mm -hmm. I go and look and almost every single stat, yeah. line outside of outside of rebounds <laughs> you were you were in the top 10 in calgary dinos history um so to say you had a, a phenomenal college career was is, is an understatement um so super excited to have you on the podcast and i'm looking forward to, to chopping it up with you appreciate it appreciate it i'm excited to be here man yeah so and the other thing is we were talking offline so how how, how long have we been trying to make this happen when was the first time i reached out to you i honestly think it was last summer like right about the time I was about to leave, I was going to Denmark last year. Yeah. Oh, let's do this interview. And I was like, ah, I'm, I'm right about to, to leave in a few days. Finally got out to Denmark. We were still trying to make it happen. And last season for me was like so much traveling with mm. uh, our preseason. We traveled a lot and then international competition. We traveled a lot. So it was, we were trying to get this thing done for at least eight months, 10 months, something like that. <laughs> Long over. Well, the least <laughs> exactly and we're here now and i asked you offline i'm like joe when are you leaving and you said next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so we yeah. caught you again uh you're heading up to france yeah i'll be going back to france yeah, yeah yeah so what uh whereabouts in france exactly uh the city is called orleans it's like orleans. Uh, about yeah. like an hour and a half from paris so nice. it's not far at all yeah 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 nice, so nice. I'm excited. That's awesome. <laughs> So I want, I want to ask you, I've, I've been starting off all these podcasts this last year, because oddly enough, the podcast kind of started up right when the pandemic was ending. And so, you know, everyone had an experience as a coach or a player um, kind of navigating that pandemic as a, as a human, but then also as a basketball player. Um, so I kind of want to ask you because, you know, you navigated that in another country, right? So like a lot of people are at home, friends, family, uh, you had to go to another country and then play basketball. Yeah. Um, so just, I guess the, the question is, is what were some of the biggest challenges uh, that you faced during the pandemic and how did it change you uh, and change your perspective? Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, the pandemic was definitely quite an experience. I know once it was going on, like I was in Finland at the time and uh, the season was going on, everything was okay. And obviously, you know, things were starting to happen in China and, you know, from afar, everybody was looking at it, but it was just kind of like, like this obviously is just going to stay in China. It's not going to yeah. be Europe or Canada or anything like that. So um, eventually came into Europe and that was obviously a pretty scary time. And there's just like a, a lot of chaos and a lot of panic going on because you don't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And 
eventually I was able to get out of Finland. It's pretty crazy. Like my, our coaches were like, Hey, you know what? The league is going to be postponed for like 10 days. Mm -hmm. So let's just say they told us that on a Monday. So they're like, you know what, with everything going on, like we've got to be careful, watch the measures. Like on Mondays, like the league is going to be postponed. We don't know if we're going to continue. You might have to think about, you know, looking to get back home, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Tuesday night or like Wednesday morning, it's like, guys, the, can the season's canceled. And I was like, yo, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like what's going on, you know? And then by like Friday or Saturday, they got us uh, flights to get back home. Wow. So it was definitely very, very like nerve wracking and flights being canceled and you're in the airport for hours and you have to stay over. I eventually got home safely. So that was like that part of it. The initial part of it was crazy. And then, you know, I was home for a long period of time. I was home mm -hmm. for four months. I got back on March 11th. I, I remember the date. So I got back on March 11th. And typically I don't get home until end of May, sometimes June. So like mm -hmm. the season is long. So I was home from March all the way till like August. So that's like four months for me. I haven't been home that long since I was in high school. Yeah. Even university, you know, you're always training in the summer. So true, true. It was, it was, it was nice. You know, it's kind of a blessing in disguise just to be around my family, my parents, you know, my cousins, my aunts, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, COVID didn't necessarily allow us to do that, but just mm -hmm. being at home, mm -hmm. you know, was a nice feeling, you know, just to kind of bring things full circle and yeah. take a step back. You know, professional basketball is what I do and what I love to do. You know, it's my job. But at the same time, you know, sometimes. You know, just spending that that good time with your family is is key. So that was a a, uh, a good time, I think. And the most challenge, one of the challenging things was last season. Mm -hmm. I was in Holland, and when I first got out there, COVID was, you know, still up in the air. There wasn't any vaccines at the time or anything like that. So mm -hmm. we initially got there. You know, had preseason, a couple of preseason games, and then they just took the fans out and said, "There's going to be no more fans." And the season's getting, we had one, we had three games. We started off three, you know, yeah. and then they just like postponed the season for like three months. And we were just practicing every day, but everything. Wow. Was so the only thing you could do was go to the bank, go to the grocery store and we could go to practice. And that was it. Everything else was closed. Wow. So it was like that for like three months or so. So that was a little bit of a challenge being in Holland with all those restrictions. But yeah, other than that, it's, it's been okay. So, well, so like you're out there by yourself. I mean, you yeah. have your teammates and whatnot. Nothing's really going on. You, you yeah. Know, when out, you go out there to play basketball. It's not yeah. happening. Like, I mean, what was that like? Like, what are you doing with your free time? Did you pick up any new hobbies? You like, what? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's always a tough thing too. Like, cause you practice and then you're literally in your apartment all day, like by yourself, mm -hmm. you know? So that was a challenging time, but I definitely stayed on the phone a lot with my family. You know, mm -hmm. FaceTime is, I know all professional athletes who play away from home is FaceTime is probably your, <laughs> your most important thing. You yeah. spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, worked on some investments as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's been something that I've been, you know, building an investment portfolio over the last few years. Mm -hmm. Read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of podcasts myself, yeah. a lot of podcasts on different topics, some for sports, some for personal development, some for investments. So I spent a lot of time you know, doing those things and, and training too at home. Yeah. A lot of meditation as well. That's something I'm a big believer nice. in. Nice, nice, you nice. Know, a few days a week, just taking the time, even if it's 10 minutes to just yep. things out and kind of refocus in. So mm -hmm. a mixture of all those things was, I would say, was what, what kept me sane during <laughs> during the COVID time. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, so I kind of wanted to get that, got got a little bit of that perspective. I wouldn't say that's current because we're seems like we're, seems like we're starting to move past that like i mean again I mean, yeah. we don't know what what's to come in life generally and you know sure. this this, we, this could all come back again but as of right now um i would say things are a lot better than they were <laughs> say a year ago of course um so but what i want to really do with you is go way 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 back so you were <laughs> we're talking about you being in, in the in the netherlands or in holland now yeah. we want to talk about you growing up in the neighborhood i kind of want to talk about your first basketball memory Okay. Really, where did you start? Where did you start playing? Who did you yeah. start playing with? Who introduced you to the game? Yeah. Um, first basketball experience, I believe I was five years old. I played oh, wow. for Maples, the Maples club team. 
Yep. yep. Uh, and so we had tournaments at U of W. We had games around the area. Um, my brother, my parents, they, they both, you know, my parents obviously wanted me to do a lot of sports. I was doing yep. soccer, basketball, tennis, swimming, you know, track, gymnastics. I was doing a lot yep. of sports. And basketball and soccer were like my two like deep loves that I had as a, at a young age at like five years old. And yeah, I started out playing in Maples. That was like my first introduction uh, to basketball. And I just fell in love with it and obviously had a bit of a skill for it. I felt like it kind of came to me a little bit naturally. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just Maples was my, my main thing that I remember and just playing outside you know, playing one-on-one -on -one against my, my brother. He's four, four years older than me. Mm -hmm. He also played at Garden City Collegiate uh, before I was there and won some KPAC championships. So he was a big, big influence on me, my upbringing of playing the game and playing against him and his friends. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah that's when I was very little, that's how it started for me. That's that's crazy. Like five years old is... Yeah. Like I, like I know even like people do start playing at five. It's, it's There's a thing, but... Yeah. But even still, man, that that's like young, like yeah, very young, yeah. <laughs> like, so you must were you playing on like with kids your age at five, or were you playing like an older team? Yeah, like I was playing, I was playing my age, like for the Maples, for the Maples. Yeah. Team. But you know, as I got a little bit older, I started playing against my brother. Yeah. And, and people yeah. of that age, you know, like he was four years older than me, so he was obviously better and yeah, you know, physic physically more advanced. So. That was a little bit frustrating at the time, but honestly, I know that helped my development a lot. You know, yeah. we'd be outside, we'd be at, you know, the Garden City courts, we'd be at uh, um, Edward, uh, Constable Edward Finney. That was like where, you know, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, they had a court out there. So yeah. we would just spend hours outside just playing like the whole summer, all the time. Yeah. And yeah. eventually got a, a net like a hoop outside my front, my front yard. Yeah. My parents got for me when we were pretty young. And then that became like battle Royale of the summer. <laughs> my older brother just playing one-on-one -on -one for hours, hours and hours outside. So I love that. So, so yeah. I know you, you said your brother's four years older. Would you say he was kind of one of maybe one, I know four years isn't that much older, but maybe one of your earlier mentors with basketball, kind of someone you looked up to and said, Hey, I want to keep playing. Or did you guys both kind of like come up together? You both kind of started at the same time. Well, he was like, he was always into sports as well. So he was a very good soccer player, like player of the year type soccer player. So I always looked up to him as far as like athletics goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basketball wise, like he was, you know, he wasn't the, the greatest talent, but he worked very hard. And he mm -hmm. obviously saw that I had some skills. So he wanted to, you know, put that influence on me. So I would say he's, he's probably like the most direct impact on me yeah. you know obviously my coaches i had great coaches yeah. when i was young i had other great teammates when i was young as well who were good players too um but i think he had probably the biggest impact on me at, at earlier on you know from a young from a younger age and you know my parents were very supportive as well and i just i was just in love with the game too so that obviously helps for sure for sure so you mentioned your bro obviously and maybe an early mentor kind of getting you going you had mentioned you know you said coaches i know you know i i know a few of your coaches that you've had but yeah. who were some of those those mentors early on or even a little bit later on that yeah. uh you know they taught you those lessons and kind of kept you on the straight and and, and helped guide you to to the man you are now okay so let me list off the <laughs> I, know. I didn't mean to put you on the spot oh, now you don't oh, want to, you don't oh. want to forget anyone now right yeah of course, of course, of course. <laughs> um early on uh i had a coach uh named abe uh I, also alex barra for for mayhem you know that's when we really started training pretty hard you know uh we were the first mayhem group to to come about i played yeah. for the vipers which was a club team back 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 in the day and we did tournaments um who else i'll Steve Tacky, you know, he was, he was big for me. Like when I was younger, um, you know, just, he was like a big, bigger brother as well. Yep. You know, that kind of, yep. that kind of figure for me, just, you know, the competitiveness, the drive, the skill set pushing me to get better. And, you know, Phil Penner, you know, my, my coach of four years at mm -hmm. Garden City Collegiate. And I, I was playing, you know, when I was in grade seven, I was already playing against those, those guys like I was going yeah. to the practices of the varsity practices and playing against you know the Myron Deans and mm -hmm. you know the Raleigh Lazegas the Brad Nairns you know I was playing against those players um and just carving my game up and he yep. 
you know, he saw me at a young age and just kind of took me under his wing. He's like, you know, this kid is, you know, I was performing well against guys who were five, six years older than me. Mm-hmm. So he has definitely been, you know, coming up, I would say Phil was definitely probably, you know, had the biggest, I mean, he had me for technically like five years, right. From I don't yeah. know, age 12 to 17, yeah. 12 yeah. to like 17. So we would spend hours in the gym in the summertime, help me change my shot, the mentality of the game, you know, how to lead, you know, mm. vocally, verbally, uh, you know, he was big for me. Like coming up, mm. Phil, Phil Penner was definitely, you know, I give him credit, <laughs> a lot of yeah. credit for the player I've become. And all, also playing provincial team was good too, you know, playing under like Shep and and Cassano, Randy Cassano as well, some of those guys as well. Obviously those are shorter stints. You're only working with them for a month or two. So, but just learning from their type of instruction and compared to what I was used to obviously helped mm-hmm. a lot too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you just named like a whole bunch, a whole whack of people, but, yeah. but yeah, man, like I think the, the, the thing that, that stood out to me, the, the thing is, is that, and, and this is something that I've heard about garden city. Now this is kind of like garden city and Phil Penner. And there's, there's, I don't want to call it like, um, like a, a legend isn't the right word, but there's, if you weren't part of it, you just heard, right? Because you, know, you guys had success, obviously, with, with the, you know, before, like, you personally in your years and then after, like, you know, Garden City is one of the more successful programs in the province. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Phil's obviously been one of the most successful coaches. But I just remember hearing from people like, oh, no, no, like, there'd be, there's, like, these runs and, like, people come back and play. And so it's interesting because you mentioned, like, you're, you're mentioning people that are, like, way older than you and, like, you're playing against them. And so... There's one thing is, you know, Phil, as far as I know, and I'm, and I'm curious what you think or what you can tell us is like Phil did a really good job of like creating that like a tradition and like a community around basketball. Uh-huh. Had people coming and playing. And, and again, I'm, I'm not sure how much you actually come and play now, but yeah. um, I know at some point you probably did. So can you maybe talk a little bit about that, that the tradition at Garden City and the community yeah. around basketball? Uh, For sure. Because, I think you hit it on the head like he it's like a family kind of atmosphere. It's a culture, you know, where players finish playing and they come back and play and Mm -hmm. they're playing like university guys, you know, from Damon Morissette, you know, to Mm -hmm. Kadeem, to uh, myself, you know, like everybody that came through, they would come back and play. So a lot of times Mm -hmm. you're in practice and, you know, you got your starting five, you got your bench five, there might be three teams and you're playing against four or five alumni you know, yeah. literally who are older than you, stronger than you, who some of them play university. Mm-hmm. So, and Phil too, Phil could play too. So that, I, he, that's another thing he, I heard he would, he would play like, he's just oh, playing. Yeah. Oh, like, he's, he's playing. Like, Yo, yeah. He's playing. He's yeah. playing and, he's, and he's getting buckets. Like he's, <laughs> he was good. Like he was really, he pushed me a lot. We had a lot of battles. one on Yeah. Yeah. So I think he just does a great job of just having that culture around the team of, you know, guys always come back and it's, you know, it's a tradition where, you know, you're a part of the team once you're a part of the team forever. And mm-hmm. you know, a lot of guys have come back to coach. A lot of guys have come back yep. to help here and there. And that's definitely, I would say, you know, the biggest impact that, that, uh, that it had on us, you know, you're practicing yeah. people who are older than you, more stronger than you physical. They've already played two or three years of varsity basketball and have experience. So mm-hmm. that obviously makes a big difference, you know, as, as far as your development throughout the, yeah. throughout the years. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like he, he really created like a, a home for you, mm-hmm. even before, like, you're young, you got a home, he's maybe he's introducing you to it. This is what it's going to be like. You're there as a student. You, you always know, hey, like we're doing this. And then mm-hmm. after, you know, you're you're going to college, but you come back home and there's there's a place for you to play. Like it's always like it was kind of like a like a center center hub for for, yeah. for people. And the one thing I always knew anyone who played at Garden City, they're kind of like not not anyone. I'm speaking very broadly here, but a lot of the people who, who continue to play on all, all the other gym rats. You guys just love playing. And I think this probably speaks to exactly what Phil kind of created there. For sure. For sure. I mean, I just got out the gym, not even two hours. <laughs> yeah. So I spent a lot of my times there. But yeah, I think he, he definitely created that too, because it was just an atmosphere of uh, the type of stuff that we would do in practice was, was stuff that you would want to do as a player. Like we're playing, we're scrimmaging, you know, yes. we're, we're playing a lot of games. We're not just doing a hundred drills, you know what I yeah. mean? it's competitive. So he kind of creates that competitive nature. Like you win, you stay on the floor, like Mm -hmm. out of winning, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think around that time too, you know, we, you know, our generation, we were playing outside a lot, like 
Yeah. You know, we were playing, I was outside playing five on five. You know, if you win, you're on the, you're on the court. If you lose, you might not get on for another 25 minutes. Yep. So like, yep. that was just the, the generation culture that I grew up in. And that is true though. A lot of guys are still in the gym or they're still connected to basketball yeah. somewhere, somehow, whether it's training kids or coaching or exactly. you know, helping their nephew or their niece or something like that. So there's definitely, you see that throughout the years from yeah. as our 10 years older than me, five years older than me to even a little bit younger than me, that guys who came up through that uh, program are have always been connected to the game some way, somehow. And like you said, have been gym rats. So yeah. that yeah. always helps. Hey, well, sh sh shout out, shout out to coach, coach Phil yeah. Penner. Always, always enjoy spending time around him. Uh, you yeah. never, you never want to be, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I feel bad for any officials that are listening that have had it, had him because man, he'll give it to the officials and oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> he will give it to him. But I mean, again, everyone who's ever played, um, for him just has nothing but pot, like great things to say about him. And like, again, I've, I've interacted with, with him, um, you know, as a coach, like it's you had different things. Uh, and mm. it's just always a, always a good time to be around and again you know he you can tell he just really cares right and so that that's so yeah shout out to him so uh, staying on that same topic garden city you guys go back to back yeah um now i'm not sure if you if you knew this um but like notwithstanding your your unbelievable career is already and i'm and i'm hoping i'm not speaking out of turn here ross if you're if you're listening but um if you go back to back within three years i think if you win two within three years you're automatically going to the the, the basketball Toba hall of fame so those teams will go into the hall of fame i think i don't know what the time frame is i think it has to be like 15 20 years after so in case you didn't know i'm telling you now so <laughs> um, but um yeah exactly well, yeah exactly again i'm not sure how they do it but i know that it's pretty much a lock so um but those were obviously some great teams, right? And then you had you guys had some great runs. Um, what do you remember about the first championship? Oh man, <laughs> first championship, man. That's that's probably to this day one of the biggest, like most memorable championships that I've had. Obviously, just because I feel like nobody really expected us to get that far, like to the yeah. finals. Because I was in grade eleven at the time. We had a couple of grade twelves, but predominantly, you know, the players on the team were in grade eleven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was very determined that year to like just make a big jump from my grade 10 year to my grade 11 year. I wanted to show that I was one of the best players in the province. I felt like I was, you know, one of those guys. And we just had this kind of dog mentality about our team. Like we're very gritty. You know, we played very hard and we had very good chemistry, too. And I just remember being in the finals against Oak Park and, you yeah. Were the young ones, you know, they were experienced at the time. They're the ones who, who had been winning and had a rich culture as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, was, I just remember being a very sloppy game, a lot of misses both ways. I've watched that game a bunch of times. So, <laughs> uh, it's not the best game to watch because there was a lot of misses, but it did come down to the wire. Yeah. And obviously, you know, it came down to, I don't know, the last maybe 20, 30 seconds. And I hit a uh, pull up three to go up one or two points. And that helped us win. And, you know, just when that buzzer sounded, you know, just the joy and jubilation of our team, just like jumping. And like the first person I ran to was my brother because he was a coach. Uh, yeah. So we just ran and just had a big hug. And it was just kind of like all the work that we had put in together, you know, finally came together. But, the, you know, the crowd cheering overrated, overrated <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, those are things that I'll never forget, you know, and we were obviously the underdogs at the time. I know. Oak Park with, you know, Justin Roper and yeah. Trevor Thurman and Rob, yeah, yeah. Mark Ridd, and they had a great team. Cassandra, yeah, yeah. Great I remember coach, that team. I don't think people were expecting us to win. So it was definitely a special moment. It was, that's you know, that, I was I'm pretty bad. sure G GC is a G. Is it, what, what do you guys say? GC what? Yeah, GC what? Yeah, GC what? So, the, so you just mentioned the whole Oak Park team, right? You got to mention some of your own teammates. You can't, just, sure. you can't mention the opponents and just. My guys, my guys. So we had uh, my first year, grade 11, we had. Dean, we had Damon Morissette, we had Alex Walker, we had Marco Milicevic, we had Mike Denisyuk, Matt Texan, myself. I know I'm obviously forgetting a few guys. <laughs> and, oh, R Roberto, Roberto Campanella also. So, you know, we had our, our Braden Duff, how could I forget? Yeah, yeah. I forget. So, breaking backboards. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> those are those are my guys. And, you know, we, we made history. So, yeah, so, yeah. I, I remember that. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was there. I was there. So I mean, it's, it's always interesting. And like, that's such a, um, like the provincial final 
always so intense because like the schools come out like it's packed and the schools are representing so hard and like yeah you know i mean and you probably have some some like you know retrospection or retrospect on this because you know you're an adult now yeah that success as a college player and as a pro mm-hmm. but when you're a kid it's different oh yeah you know i mean like you said that feeling that uh, like of elation and like it's just like you don't it's different it, you know it's very different it's rare to find that just innocence just pure love and yes. joy for the game not that it's not there now i still feel the same way but yeah you, know, you go through university then you you know you become a professional and yep. it's different you know there's it's it's business now it's your job it's work it's, exactly you know whereas you know you're with your high school friends you're with your high yeah. school yeah you know what i mean teammates and people that you you're going to class with and yeah high school is just the most innocent time yep. so those are things that people hold on to dearly, you know, and I still do, you know, and I think, you know, if I had, maybe if we didn't win the first one, who knows if that could have impacted the way my career had went, you know, because yeah. obviously winning, you know, provincial title, being MVP and, you know, being player of the year and, and winning in grade 11, like it wasn't something that was happening all the time. It wasn't mm. that common. So that obviously gave me a lot of confidence moving forward in myself, yeah. and program, my team and, and, uh, you know, eventually a, achieve the goals i wanted to achieve but yeah. for sure high school is high school is high school is is there's nothing like it you know it's yeah different it, it is different so then you guys went back to back though who do you guys play in the second year second year we played uh sturgeon heights okay no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sturgeon yeah. Heights yeah 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 so, yeah and that year we were prepared you know, we, yeah we were playing very well throughout the whole season and even in the, the quarterfinals the semifinals i know we played very well too so yeah yeah well it's rare like i said back to back is automatic hall of fame so yeah, yeah. that's that's it's rare like you know you don't go back to back i mean i think there's I mean, even even the fact that it's it's two and three years right so it's kind of like that idea of like a dynasty yeah um so i mean that's like i said it's uh it's rare and it's it's an accomplishment that um you obviously will be formally recognized for at some point and um so it's always cool to like kind of hear about that but i always I, I, the first one is always going to be like the not yeah. always, but it's often the most special one, right? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So I'm curious, man. So you went on, obviously, you know, you, you go on after uh, after high school. You go play at USC. And I remember this because I was, I, mean, I was in the coaching, you know, realm. I'm, you know, a lot of friends with coaches and, you know, coach like, hey, what's going on with this player, this player? Like, where are they going? Um, and, and, you know, you going to USC was a big thing. Now, USC had a good team. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you straight up, uh, you know, why did you choose Calgary? <clears throat> so like early on I had you know obviously other you know teams were interested local teams of course you know for obvious reasons and you know there was a big draw to potentially staying home and uh or potentially going to other places mm-hmm. but UFC for me it was you know I was I was nervous I was scared you know when I made my decision honestly you know I did my did my ID camp and I went out there and you know I just saw the mm-hmm. campus the campus was just massive you know mm-hmm. I was just kind of like almost taken aback, like this might be too much for me, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, my ultimate goal was always to be a professional basketball player. You know, obviously I wanted to go and get my education, which I did. And, you know, my my bachelor's degree, communication studies major, all that stuff got taken care of. But for me, UFC had players that were at the time, Ross Beckering, Robbie Sahota, Tyler Fiddler, who were planning to become professional basketball players. And for me, I just said to myself, well, if that's what I know in my heart and in my mind, that that's what I'm going to do, that's what I want to be, I have to go somewhere where I can learn from those guys and play with those guys and be around that kind of culture to to make it, you know? So that was the biggest, that was probably the biggest reason was just, you know, obviously they have good education as well, but, you know, they have guys who are going to play pro and, you know, they're, on the national ranks, you know, every other year, good program. And I wanted to go away from home. You know, I wanted to challenge myself. You know, I said, I don't, I feel like staying home would be the easier thing to do just as far as comfort level being around my family and things like that. I said, yeah, I go to Calgary now in a way I'm on my own. When I become a professional, I'm going to be on my own. So let me get this experience being away from home at the university level, learning to cook for myself, learning to, you know, have hard practices and then come home, make food. And now you have to finish an exam and a paper yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And you don't have your, 
parents there necessarily to help you hands on. Right. So mm -hmm. it was those two things. It was the guidance of those professional future professional players, the program, the history, and then also challenging myself to go away from home. Because to me, both of those things with my work ethic were going to lead me to becoming a professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then what, what uh, other schools, uh, obviously outside you know, local schools, but like you mm -hmm. mentioned, I'm sure, again, there were some other schools that really wanted yeah. to come out there. Uh, University of Winnipeg, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, they were recruiting me early on, you know, mm -hmm. I watched a lot of their games and I watched a lot of Irfan and Sajpur, a lot of, of course. Yeah. modeling and learned a lot from those guys. U of M came on late because that, that, that summer they were having coaching change. Mm -hmm. so they didn't necessarily have their coach. Uh, Is that the year that... Was that ships? Jeff was was coming okay. but at yeah. the time yeah. when they were you know conversing with me they didn't have a coach yet so it was kind of like a well i don't yeah. know what you're playing for yeah um that kind of thing written university of brandon early on keep the cell had mm -hmm. uh rainy river minnesota was like a div two or div three school mm -hmm. and then there was some interest from university of ottawa mm -hmm. and then also fraser valley with barnaby craddock yep. but yeah. uh you know Dan Van Horn, my my coach uh, of USC, he was just yeah. very persistent, and I just feel like you know everything happens for a reason in my eyes. Yes. You know, uh, it was Westman Classic, and we were in the finals, and I just dominated. Like I, I don't remember exactly. I think I had forty three or forty six in the final. Yeah, yeah. Record, and they were playing after us. Yeah. So the Calgary Downers were playing after us. And like, as I was walking off the court, he just like stopped me and was like, Hey, like <laughs> great game. I'm going to get your information. And I was kind of like, Oh, like that was the first time, like that kind of interaction had happened. And I was kind of yeah. like, okay, but I didn't really think anything of it. You know, the following Monday, like I get to school, I get called to the office and like, he's on the phone with like a pamphlet and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, like, this is pretty serious. Like he's interested. I'm like, okay. We spoke a little bit eventually came in and watched me play yeah it was in my living room with my parents <laughs> uh you know this is what i want for jared it's gonna be yeah like this. we're gonna make sure he's okay you know education is gonna look like this physical you know housing is gonna look like this so he just really gave me a lot of comfort you know and uh, he really pursued me and called me a lot and that just i was like you know this guy's serious and i didn't feel that same intrigue necessarily from everyone i guess yeah 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 also, along with the other you know variables that i mentioned earlier for sure for sure so, so it was interesting because if i'm not mistaken um you go out there your first year yeah. i think you guys you went to nationals but i'm pretty sure that you led the team in minutes played that year yeah i did as a rookie yeah i did yeah <laughs> which is which is kind of crazy because it's like yeah. Yeah. when i was reading when i was reading your bio it's like yeah you're like i think you're you're number one in game started all time. Yeah. Uh, so you started straight from the jump, essentially. From the jump, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, and also that was a thing too. Like, you know, he said, you know, you're gonna have to compete. You know, to play. They had a point guard, a fifth year point guard at the time, Jamie McLeod. Still a good friend, men mentor at the time. Still mentor now. Great guy, um, and great point guard. Uh, I just came in with the mindset of, you know, at, after I went and played at the ID camp, I was like, I'm good. Like, I'm ready. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, those guys will tell you I've had a lot, not arrogance, but I was very confident in my abilities. You know, I've been playing against older players my whole mm -hmm. career, even at UFC or at, you know, Garden City, we would have some of the Bison guys come, you know, Eric Garcia yeah. and Jonar and, yeah. you know, Stephen OJ and a lot of those kind of guys, you know, I'm playing against them when they're already in university two second third year fourth year players and i was in high school and i was holding my own myron dean as well yeah, so yeah. i was very confident in my abilities and when we got when i got there i just said you know what like i believe like i don't know how it is for everybody but i don't want to come in here and just kind of not try to step on toes and like mm -hmm. i believe i'm i'm good like i believe i should play now i believe I should be playing a lot of minutes and I should be one of the best players on this team. And like, I genuinely felt that way. And it just so happened to be that, you know, I ended up leading the team in minutes and I was on the floor, you know, a lot. So yeah. it worked out good. <laughs> and then you guys went to nationals. What do you remember about that year? Man, uh, we went to nationals. We went to the Can West final as well, I believe. And, and, and the thing I remember the most 
is that we won the semifinals of our conference and then we went to the Can West final and it was yeah. in UBC, if I'm not mistaken, and we ended up losing to Saskatchewan. And they were like a tough team with Sean Glover and oh, yeah, that was that team. Yeah, yeah. And they had a great team. Uh, but I remember is like as soon as we made the final, if I'm not mistaken, we had we were a lock for nationals. Yeah. So to me, I was like, man, we're going to nationals. You know, like I was, I'm 18. Yeah. So excited. I'm like, we're going to nationals. Like it's my first year here. I knew we were going to make it. This was the goal from the beginning of the year. We're going to nationals. Not not realizing like, well, we have a chance to win the Can West Championship yes. you know, tonight. You know, so that game mentally, I don't think I was fully ready and then we went to nationals and that was just an amazing you know experience you know playing in a bigger arena at the scotia bank at the time you know you're used to playing in high school gyms and things like that you know it was a bigger arena more people there from the east you know other teams and you know there's banquets and there's food and patients yeah, yeah. like oh this is like a big deal you know we're one of the best in the country yeah so that's my my biggest experience from that and you know i know we lost in the in the semifinal, I believe. And mm-hmm. I know down the stretch, you know, that game I was on the floor a lot, but I wasn't, I feel like I was allowing our fifth year players to try and, you know, take the lead. And the last two, three minutes, I scored like 16 points in two minutes or something like that. I just said, you know what? Like <laughs> the game is almost over. We're probably down 10 or 12. And I'm like, I'm just going to, anytime I get it, I'm looking to shoot. I'm looking to score. I don't care. You know, yeah. like, we're not, we're almost going to lose. And then I just started hitting shots, hitting shots, hitting shots. And that kind of gave me confidence moving forward as well. Yeah. You know, you know I know I'm going to have to be a leader for this team, you know, once these guys go, Yeah. Uh, you know, for the following year. So that was so, the biggest memory. Two things I want to bring up for, for moving forward. So obviously first year you play a ton that yeah. continued. Yeah. But after that, you got a taste of nationals. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure you guys didn't return after that, right? So you 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 know you came up short, like because that's the thing. That's like the the tough thing is like if you have success straight off the top, especially yeah. championship success, or you do real well, it's like you you always expect or want to get back to that yeah. thing. And then you know, so what was that like? I mean, you must have was it was it like a mental battle? I mean, obviously every year you're like, no, we're getting back there, we're getting yeah. back there, and you're coming yeah. up short. Yeah, um, it must have yeah. been tough. Yeah, it was tough. Like, you know, making it the first year, I was like, okay, well, this is just how it goes. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're young, you know, you're naive, you know, you just think like you're guaranteed going to make it, you know? And my second year, unfortunately, that's when I got injured. So that yes. obviously, you know, has some stuff to do with, you know, us not really competing. And then my third year, you know, playing and I had another small injury that kind of kept me out for a month or two with my thumb. And, you know, we were competing. We, we built the roster together yep. and, we just never got back, you know, yeah. and I, that was really frustrating for me. It was just like, well, we do it our first year. And this is what I came here for. I came here to yeah. learn from these guys and I came here to compete for championships every year. Like, I don't care who's on the roster. I want to be a national period. You know, like that was my mindset and that's how I approached it. That's how I worked. And it was tough. Like, yeah. you know, trying to knock on that door and losing or not getting to the canvas final or just mm-hmm. you know, losing the games that we needed to get to get us over the hump to get there yeah. you know even my last year i think was our best chance to do it you know we had a really good team and I believe we lost in the semifinals or or the first round of playoffs or something like that and my my career is over i was like i only got the experience that once like yeah it just shows you how precious those things are even from high school level to university yeah. level to even this year professionally you know winning a championship like you know, this is my first time winning a championship in, since high school. I was going to say, yeah, it's been, it's been a minute. Oh, <laughs> it's been well, a long time. It's, it's, we're, we're, regardless of the level, you got to cherish it and appreciate yeah. it while, while it's there. And obviously a lot of things have to go right. You have to have some help and a little bit of, you know, luck, as they say. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's what you, you, you make a, a good point. It's just, just generally speaking. And this is something that I, you know, I try to, again, you try to tell this to young people or just people generally friends and you know even myself i check in and, and i'm sure you you know you've had these moments where you know you do you are striving for a goal but like they always say you know it's it's it's, it's about the journey right yeah. and, the, and the journey has some value to it yeah. um but when you do accomplish some something it's like it's so important to kind of value that and don't expect that it's going to come up again exactly. right it's like this moment that's happening now might be the 
well, it literally will be the only be one moment like this, right? And you can win another championship, but like I asked you about your first one at GC, right? That was different than the second one. Of course, of course. This is all you. That's all you got, right? So it's like important to kind of make sure you stay focused on that. For sure. Um, well, so you, you finish up at U, USC, um, like I said, what, like you knew from the start before you even went there, like, I'm going to go play pro. I want to play pro. Yeah. So now you're finishing up. How soon did you start to um, actually take steps to make that pro, pro career possible? So like, there's obviously like, hey, I got to play well. But then there's the part where it's like, yo, I need an agent. Like, where am I going to play? Am I trying out for teams? Did, yeah. did you wait until you were completely done and then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm doing that? Or do you start that process earlier? And then what did the process look like? So for me, like, I took a lot of advice, obviously, from, you know, Robbie Sahoda, Ross Beckering, because they were pros, you know, mm -hmm. at the time. By my fifth year, they had already been three, four, five-year professionals. So I just talked to them a lot about, you know, the process. What's it like? What do I got to do? And they just, you know, kept on saying, just focus on finishing your season, play your best enjoy it because like you said it's only you only get one chance to be a university player you know mm -hmm. so for me i remember after our season was done uh i was just kind of like okay like what now you know like mm -hmm. i'm done you know there's no basketball i know i want to be a pro at yeah. that time i wasn't really necessarily in contact with agents or anything like that and that's when i got called to play for the fisu games mm -hmm. and i didn't even know i was eligible so that was just like wow, thank you. Like I didn't, it was a great opportunity to do that. And then shortly after that, I was in contact with like a European agent who had reached out. Uh, and then uh, Matt Slant, you know, one of my old agents, he, he reached out based in Toronto. And, uh, you know, we just, we, we spoke and he just said, you know, I think you have a lot of potential and I think you can, you know, become a professional. I'd like to represent you. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. I said, okay, signed. And then from there, you know, he was doing his work behind the scenes, you know, trying to get teams to be interested in me and eventually got me my first opportunity in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. So briefly tell us about that first opportunity, because again, like you've kind of reflected at each stage, right? You talked about when you were, when you were really young, talk yeah. about when you're in high school, you're kind of okay, like, you know, you're playing with your friends, you're winning championships. Yeah. Talked about college, right? <clears throat> um, but now you're playing pro, you're in a different country. Yeah. Uh, you know, different language, different way of life. Um, obviously, the professional life, that's a business now. You're playing against sure. people who, you know. What, what was that first year like to you? Was it a shock? Uh, what, what stands out in your memory? Um, man, it's great times. Like, when I think, <laughs> man, it's, like you said, you know, your first year is your first year. It's so, yeah. it's, what's the word? It's uh, precious, you know. And mm. There's nothing like it, so. I actually ended up playing with Jordan Baker and Jordan Baker was, yeah. he was at U university of Alberta. Yeah. Shout out. And, uh, yeah. We were kind of a little bit, I think, I believe I signed first. Yeah. I signed first. And then shortly after that, we were a little bit in contact and he was telling me that he was thinking about signing as well. So he signed as well. And we had already played together, you know, from the three on three competitions yeah. and over the years, so we already had some chemistry and we knew each other. So just that alone, going into my first professional season with somebody that I'm familiar with for the last five, seven years, basketball wise was just an ease, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but just getting there, you know, just like, it's like, man, this is what I've always wanted to do. Like I was just ready. You know, I've been prepping myself mentally, physically, emotionally for years since I was in like grade seven, eight, I yeah. knew I wanted to get to this point. So, you know, just get into the airport and you're in a different country and, you have the managers at the time come pick you up at the airport and their English wasn't that great. You know, <laughs> we're just like, Jared, I'm like, yes, Jordan. We're like, yes. And then pick you up, take you to your flat. You know, you're seeing all these palm trees and all this nice weather. I'm just like, man, this is crazy, you know, and then take us to our apartment, show us our rooms. And I was like, man, we're really here. You know, they show us the restaurants where we can eat at and stuff like that, take you around the city. And then, yeah great to practice and you could tell you know initially that it was you know phil always coached us super hard so i me i've never been scared of coaches at yell or anything like that like i've always been prepped well i feel and you know you could just tell it was like more business like you know these are people's yeah. jobs now like my coach like this is his job like this is his perfect this is how he feeds his family so like winning <laughs> is important coaches get fired players get yeah. changed things like that happen. So that was 
that part of it was just learning the business and seeing how, you know, we had so certain players that had to get switched up during the year who got cut and brought in new American. Yeah. That was, that was nerve wracking. You know, I think my first, my first preseason game, I think I finished with like 15 or 16 points, but you know, I feel like, you know, the other guard may have outplayed me and I was like, Oh no. Like, and I was kind of nervous, you know, I was like, just the intensity was just different. The physicality yeah. was different, you know? And, you know, as, as a Canadian or American, these other, these other local guys are like, we want to, take yeah. this guy down because you're supposed yeah. to be the one of the better players. So that happened. And I remember one of our first games of the season, like I played well the first game of the season. And then I remember the second game of the season, I had like two points and it was on the road. Yeah. I just played very, very, very bad, you know, and I was nervous. I was like, Damn, I played terrible. And you hear stories about players getting fired and stuff like that. Yeah. And after the game, like it was our coach, it was our president and it was our general manager. And they're just like, outside by the bus just having like a deep conversation like you know and I was like yo man they're probably talking about me like I might be going home like I was just like nervous. yeah 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 I was like damn like really like is this really gonna happen and then like a few days later like the coach spoke to me and he was like oh what do you think about this player you know we might be thinking about moving him and I was like oh <laughs> yeah you're like okay yeah I'm like oh, <laughs> good but I'm you know so, but it was just that kind of nerve wracking thing. And then, you know, with, with anything, with experience and more games and more practices, you, know, you get more comfortable and you find the places where you eat and where you hang out, things like that. And yeah, 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 that's where you got comfortable. So it went well. So again, we could probably talk about your pro career forever, but yeah. <laughs> just, just one quick question about it. Um, what was, what has been so far? Um, so two questions, one, your favorite like country to live in, outside of basketball and then one was like the favorite like league or you know basketball experience so like separate the two i mean it might be the same i don't know but yeah. i get asked this all the time <laughs> that's are hard i can say like three places for for like three different reasons all right let's like hear portugal it. i stayed there for two years so naturally if you're somewhere for two years you're gonna you know it more right so like is this the same team same team, you know, yeah. I had offered yeah. to, to switch teams, but I was like, if I'm going to stay in the same league, I might as well stay with the same team that knows me, yeah. knows the game, same coach. So like Portugal, like living wise, like, man, it's, I love Portugal. Like yeah, the weather, you know, the food is amazing. You know, it's yeah. warm. People are very nice and friendly and yeah. you know, it's very multicultural. You're seeing, you know, all types of, you know, white, black, Portuguese, Spanish, Brazilian, yeah. Italian, mix African people. So it's like, you know, yeah. I kind of felt comfortable. Yeah, I see people that look like me, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the sports, the soccer, you know, going to soccer games. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just like, it's just very tropical out there as well. So it's just like Portugal has like a close place in my heart. I'm still very close with, uh, you know, a lot of the people that I played for. Mm -hmm. uh, the general manager, the president, the general manager has, has, has come with his family to visit me Wow. in Spain and France to watch me play a couple of times. Yeah. I'm still very close with a lot of people there. So from that standpoint, I loved Portugal. Yeah. And also my family had come. My parents came to visit me. My sister came, my brother came. So those are experiences yeah. that last a lifetime, right? Like yeah. Yeah. we're touring and seeing yeah. mints and everything. And I'm with my parents, you know, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we did it. I'm here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No and doubt. Spain was also great. You know, Spain is just like, uh, you know, I started doing a little bit of Spanish, you know, with a close friend of mine back in university, just on the side, because yeah. I was always like, I always wanted to learn Spanish, you know, and ACB is the top league in Spain. And I've always wanted to, you know, play in that league. And, you know, once I signed my contract to get to Spain, I was just like, so excited. I'm like, I'm going to Spain, like Spain, you know what I mean? That's yeah. a <laughs> place. And Spain was just like, it was very similar to Portugal, as far as like the infrastructure and kind of the weather and beautiful and the basketball so tactical and very skilled I, I learned a lot when I was there I had a really good coach uh his name is Borja Comenge I believe his last name and uh my parents also came to visit me there and my brother came to visit me there nice. so that was a great experience going to games going to monuments together mm -hmm. but the special part about Spain for me is that my dad when he grew up in Nigeria and he immigrated to Spain to Madrid when he was, I believe, 19. Okay. And he worked there for like two years. 
So he was oh, wow. in Spain as like a young, young adults, right? And um, we, when he came to visit us, like we went back to his neighborhood of where, oh, he, where he used to live in Madrid. And we went and he's like, yeah, he somehow got the address from an old friend and saw like the apartment building. And we went yeah. and, saw it, and it was still there. So like, this is like 40 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It would take 30, 40 years. I can't remember at the time. And we went together and like saw where he used to live and where he used to work. And that was just like a special moment for me and a special moment for him. Just because That's like cool. to see something where he, so I, I have always, because of that, knowing that I always wanted to play in Spain, I always wanted yeah. to speak Spanish. And I do now probably like, you know, 40, 50% Spanish. Like nice. when I was there, I was taking classes and yeah. I was to get around very easily. And, you know, if you don't so. use it, you lose it. So from that standpoint, Spain was also phenomenal. Just like that kind of historic feeling for my, yeah. my family. That was amazing. And then France and then France, uh, obviously I, I speak French. I did French immersion. Okay. And uh, I met, you know, my eventual wife now in France. So nice. We nice. met in the city that I played in and, you know, I had my own vehicle and that was the, well, that was the first year I was able to just travel a lot. I mm. was, so that year, you know, I'm going to Paris, I'm going to Marseille, I'm going to Lyon, I'm going to Geneva and Switzerland, like just driving there with my girlfriend yeah. and now my wife, like on my off days, you know, that was the first time I really felt like, man, like I'm getting paid to play basketball, something I love to do. And, you know, on my off days, on my off time, like I'm traveling and seeing these different cities and these different cultures and these different buildings and monuments. And yeah, yeah, I would say those three have, you know, special places in my heart for obvious reasons, you know, family mm -hmm. reasons. My first couple of seasons meeting my wife in France. Yeah. You know, obviously, that's crazy. Yeah. And Spain, you know, that was always somewhere I wanted to be and speak the language and yeah, you know, living there. So just those connections. And the, the other countries I've been in were great too. Yeah, All yeah. People, but I would probably say those are my top three. Nice, nice. Yeah. I love that, man. I love it. And I love, you know what I love about them? They're all connected to like, um, so I asked you, I said, well, what, you know, what are your, your top three and blah, blah, blah. And, and every single one of them were connected to like, life experiences like exactly. you're playing basketball there but there is something else that was important to you right and i think that's that's an important kind of thing that i can see like obviously you you know you're very aware of this is that like you have basketball but you're also just living life right like you're out here and it's important that you're you know enjoying enjoying these things and being aware and, and, and i mean let's be honest man like a lot of people would just just traveling alone like the fact that you just even live there but like yeah. you said the last thing you said you're like i'm playing basketball yeah and i'm traveling around this country like this yeah. is amazing right it's, and it's, yeah it's, like it's definitely amazing. that's crazy and I, yeah i didn't know that's great that's hey congr congratulations i mean i don't know I'm not, I'm not sure how long you've been married but that's so cool too to like meet your wife and like in different exactly. countries that's so cool man i love that i love it thank you, thank you. um all right we, we're gonna wrap up so i got uh i got three uh Three questions. These ones are like the standard wrap-up questions. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna ask them straight up, and, uh, and we'll just see what you got. So the first one is your most memorable basketball moment, story, season, whatever it may be. Something that stands out right now that you're like, you know what, this is the thing that you know, it's the most memorable. It has the most impact, the most you know, uh, mm. special to you. What, what would that? What would that be? It can be a story. It can be an entire year. It can be a single moment. I mean, I've had people say all sorts of things. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't have to be one single moment. No, no. It can be an entire season. It can be something that happened, I don't know, on the bus even. Like it's, it can be anything. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It could, it could be that first championship right? for all I, mean, I know. I mean, it's, it's really. It's, there. it's definitely up there. <sighs> Biggest basketball moment. Most memorable, mm. most impactful. Man, that's tough. <laughs> These are always tough ones, man, because like sometimes yeah. people just have them. They're like, because they've been asked the question before and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I know this is it. Because yeah. it is something that you need to reflect on. So if you, if you need to, if you need to let it stew a little bit, I'll ask you the next question and then you can, that might just come up subconsciously, let your subconscious work a little bit. The, ne the next one I'm going to ask might be hard too, though. So. Yeah, okay. I'd say so, I, 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 have, I have one. Yeah. Right. Honestly, right, like, Biggest basketball moment that I say I would have still like just hitting 
you know, the shot to go ahead in our first high school championship yeah. win. Like that was just a memorable, that was such a memorable moment. Like that was the first time I had ever won a championship being an underdog. I just feel like that shot just helped me become the player I am today and yeah. just the confidence that I have, you know, in myself as a basketball, yeah. as a basketball player. That was such a special moment. Like, I've had game winners, you know, I had game winner in Portugal, like yeah. once or twice I had game winner in college as well. So like, those are obviously special too. And this past season winning a championship was definitely special as well. You know, mm -hmm. you know, having a great season and, and, and winning a championship, just comparing it, just saying like, man, the last time I won a championship was last was my first one. In, in <laughs> so that part of it is crazy, but that shot is, is definitely, definitely special you know that stands that, out this if i'm talking about a moment that stands out the only yeah. other thing i could compare to that is what we spoke about earlier it was just like the journey and for me i never forget and i still do now but just like all the work that i have put in mm -hmm. so there's the, the famous story of me waking up super early like to go to school so i would be waking up at like 5 a.m like in the winter time and catching the bus you know down the street and getting to garden city at like 6 a.m and working off like two hours before practice before school yeah. every yeah. Day. like i was doing that every day you know at ufc i was sneaking back in the gym using the machine the, the, the shooting machine shooting like a thousand shots in a day in the hallways yeah. when the gym was locked like dribbling you know for our like those like those aren't moments but those are points in time that I remember I'm like man I, I put so much work in I deserve to be here yeah. you know where I am so those I would say those two things nice nice I love that There's, you're, you're just speaking about again that process right Lo loving loving the process man I find like people who figure that out or sometimes it's not about figuring out sometimes it's just about that's your personality type but if you can yeah. love the process then like mm -hmm. you will have some form of success for sure for sure no question and and the bigger thing is i think you've kind of spoken to this in so many words is you find out something about yourself mm -hmm. you know what you're willing to do uh what yeah. you want to do what you like doing for sure um, if you just lean into that process yeah kind of expect that like those are the results right like the, it's like you know you don't know if you're gonna win or not like you can't exactly. you can't determine that but you can determine if you get up like at five and go to the gym every day for sure that's a win because you know you can control that and exactly. that's the process you know exactly exactly yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I love that i love that um all right so again i told you this one this next one might be tough but you might have a story so funniest basketball story so again now this can be anything man like this on the bus it could be on the court something stupid happened uh yeah, again, I know you might not have anything off, but if you do, uh, would love to hear it. You played a lot of basketball, man, so yeah. you got to have something. You played, you, and again, keeping in mind, you played in Europe, so I know like some of those, some of the things that maybe you don't think are funny, yeah. probably be funny to the listeners, right? Because they don't maybe understand some of the stuff that happens at, at games and things like that. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I have two like off the top of my head. That All right, let's hear those. I'm trying to think if one of them is like <laughs> appropriate. Yeah, yeah, appropriate. I think it is. I think it is. Uh, well, you know, you can. I think it is. I'll, 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 t I'll tell. It. I'll Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So the first one is obviously like, you know, back in high school, like we would run crazy when we would do things wrong. So you know, for, yeah. for, you know, it was classic for making us run and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, shooting balls here and there. So <laughs> one practice, we just got so mad and it's like. You know, told everybody, like everybody on the line, like everybody about the sprint right now. I'm like, oh, well, how many we're we gonna do? It's like, it doesn't matter, you know. It's just like, <laughs> you know, run. and like the ball just like by chance just came to him, and he just like booted the ball like as hard as he could, like <laughs> went into the rafters, and then it just came from the rafters and just like fell in the hoop and like swished it. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like before we were about to sprint. So obviously everybody just started to burst out laughing. Yeah. We had to run. So that was like, that always kind of stuck with me. Hold on. Did you have to run still? Of course. <laughs> yeah. I thought you would have been like, yo, I guess that's a sign. No, <laughs> no, no. Like we still have to run. So that's like. Come on, Phil. Yeah, that's one of the funnier <laughs> ones. And then last, last year was crazy. Like last year, last year, just like serious, but it's crazy. So that's yeah. like. Yeah. Basically, we're having a tough time, you know, we're losing games that we shouldn't lose, that kind of thing. 
and we have like a team meeting we're going over like film and like we had a croatian coach and like you know eastern european coaches are very very intense very passionate very good coaches but very intense so you know he was mad and going over the film and we got to be here we got to do this we got to do that we got to do this one of our teammates just got up and like it's like you know what like we need to do like he just basically took over the whole whole film session like i'm sick and tired of us doing this we should be playing at this level blah, yeah. blah, blah. like takes his water bottle like boots his water bottle right I'm like, <laughs> guys. and this is like to this day like probably like the most nicest friendliest teammate i've ever had like the most nicest guy and nba player i have to say his name sorry that da- and damian rudis okay okay <laughs> boy you play for indiana pacers Played for Timberwolves with KG. Played with yeah. uh, played in NBA for like three or four years, something like that. So I can't yeah. remember. Greatest guy. So mad. And he just like takes the microphone and was so mad and just like threw the microphone, but had the cord on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it just like went around and s- smacked me in the back of my head. Oh, <laughs> I going through this like crazy rant and he was just like shook like oh my god like came and just gave me like a little kiss yeah. on the and <laughs> went right back into his <laughs> like it was such a serious moment but the yeah. fact that, that happened like was so like i didn't take it it wasn't bad or anything like that yeah like, he oh, was like oh yeah but yeah but it was just like it was crazy like that's one thing that sticks out for sure for me so was it <laughs> so both moments were very serious like with yeah. with angry people angry coaches yeah. angry players and then yeah. something like weird happened yeah exactly yeah it's interesting you bring those things yeah. up. <laughs> if i can name two like those ones that stand out. happens every day but like those yes. definitely stuck out so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good that's good all right last question here um now this question here imagine yourself and i know you've done this type of type of stuff before because i know you've done some some speaking but mm-hmm. you're standing in front of a group of players now but i want you to imagine these players are all younger versions of you you got a room full of them and they're all looking at you and yeah. they know what you've done and they just want and and they're hungry for guidance right these are these are the kids like you like yo if i say hey come at five get up yeah. at five come at six yo they're there yeah. so what three pieces of advice would you give to those players um that they want to play pro. They want to have success in high school. They want to get better. What, what piece of advice would you give them? First, I would say, first thing is like, to me, is you got to make a choice of like, what do I want? Mm. Like look in the mirror and get off Instagram, get off social media and be like, what do I want? Like as a player, like legitimately, do I want to, whatever the goal is, I want to be, you know, top 10 in high school. I want to be a university player, CIS player. I want to be a college player. I want to be a professional. Like, decide what that is and be firm with it. Like, because if you don't have a goal, to me, it's just kind of like you're just, you're just there. You're just here, you know? So mm-hmm. decide what that is. Then after you decide what that is, so if you want to be a professional, if you want to be a university player, then you have to say, okay, like, what am I willing to do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like, like seriously, you know, because it obviously takes work. Then I would just say, you have to like outwork everyone. So like, that was my mindset. Like when I was by grade, I'll say by like grade seven, eight is when I was kind of like, like I knew I wanted to play pro at, around that time. You know, I was like, I, I just, I just, I'm in love with that. It's like a drug. Like I'm in love with basketball. Like I'm addicted to it. So I'm like, no matter what happens, I will work harder than everyone, period. There won't be anybody who can say that they worked harder than I don't care, like whatever happens, happens, but I yeah. guarantee you, I was in the gym longer than you and I put up more shots than you. I worked on my ball handling more than you. Mm-hmm. I watch film more than you. Like if you have the time to do it, like I was that dedicated. Like yeah. I missed high school parties. I missed events and in, in university, I missed barbecues. Like, you know, I'm not saying don't have a life, obviously mm-hmm. have fun and all that. But like, cause those two, like hard, like if you work that hard, like something good is going to happen. Especially if you have some talent. So I would say those those are the two main things. Cause I feel like those are two main things that helped me get to where I am. It's just like I made that decision and I was like, I'm not wavering on this. Like I will do this. I will be a CIS all-star. I will be, you know, the you know, write down your goals also. Like mm-hmm. this this might not be in a three-step thing. I'll just give you kind of my thoughts and ideas of things. It's like 
write your goals down. You know, at a young age, I wrote down grade 11. Like I want to be the best player in the city. And I wrote it on like 50 stick notes and put them all over my drawer, all over my room. Every day I woke up, all I saw was that. Yeah. So to the point where like, I believed it and I walked around with this aura, not a cocky aura, but like, I believed that I was already that. Mm-hmm. I'm not exaggerating when I say like 50, like 20, like legitimately like 20 stick notes, like in my drawer, on my desk, like in the washroom. Yeah, all, yeah. Everywhere to the point where it was just like, you know what I mean? You just believed it. So like, that's very big too, is like goal setting. So I would say those two things for sure. Just like, you have to outwork everybody. Everybody talks about hard work. Oh, you got to work hard, man. But like, yeah. what does that actually mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And to me, it meant like, no matter what, like I'm working hard, everyone, period. I don't care. And like, I still have that mindset now, but more controlled because before yeah. I would almost do too much work to the point yeah. where now I'm getting injuries, you know? So I would say those two things. And then also like, you have to be coachable, you know, you have to be coachable. You have to listen to your coaches. You have to listen to your players, be able to receive feedback and not take it bad. Um, I think that's very big. And another thing too is, you know, as a young kid or whatever age you are, like your circle, your group of friends, mm-hmm. your the people you're around is, is massive. Like I can say all these things, but let's say you're around people who are doing bad things or who skip mm-hmm. class or who are, you know, involved yeah. in bad things. If you're, if that's your environment, then that's likely what you're going to end up being, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully get yourself good friends who, who are good people and respectful and, put yourself around good people, you know, be coachable, listen, you know, pair those three things together, I think will, will help you. You know, they say the, the three to five closest people you're around yeah. your friends are more than likely how you're going to end up. So yeah. if you're with somebody who's just always outside doing something bad. If three of your best friends are like that, the chances of you becoming something crazy are very low, you know, whereas if yeah. your friends are, Oh, this person's a, I'm not saying they have to be these, saints or anything like that yeah like, this person's very educated you know they're always in school they're always trying to give their best this person may be an athlete and he's always giving his best or this person's trying to be a mm-hmm. doctor or this person has their own business or whatever the case may be but like driven people driven minded people the more close people that you have around you who are like that and you cut that with your goals it's only going to help push you forward mm-hmm. i'd kind of say like a combination of of all those things and that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a pro or you're going to yeah. be a CIS player. You're going to be an all-star, any, anything like that. Like I've ran camps and I've done training with kids all the time. And I just say like, I was willing to do that knowing that, okay, even if I don't make it, well, it was never really an option for me not to make it. I'll, I'll just be <laughs> really honest. Like I always believed I was going to get to this point, but if you don't, you're going to be able to take all of those habits yes. and put them into whatever it is, whatever profession yeah. You can put that into your relationships with your family and your friends. You could put that into your profession, but that like, you know what I mean? Like that translates to all walks of life. So I'm just like, if you can do that for basketball, let's say it doesn't work out fine, but maybe you'll be the best doctor. Maybe you'll be the mm-hmm. best dentist. Maybe you'll be the best, uh, I don't know, accountant or lawyer or whatever coach, whatever maybe. Yeah. Yeah. high school teacher. So yeah. that's all of those traits to me, you know, relate to life and that's why i feel like me having this journey like like you said the journey is the reward of high school all the way through all this professional all this basketball like it's great you know what i mean it's amazing and i know that whenever it is finished i'll be able to take the same experiences and the same work ethic and drive and ambition and focus and all those things mm-hmm. and put them into the next phase of my life and hopefully have success in that too yeah yeah 100 percent, brother that, that was that was well said. Um, I appreciate you taking the time. I know, it, like I said, it took us a whole year, but uh, we, we we did it. Yeah, uh, we got to hear your story, hear your journey. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say, but thank you and uh, good luck uh, back in uh, in in France uh, thank you. with thank with you. your with your wife and all that. Man, that's awesome. I mean, what, sorry, what's you're are you in Or Orleans? Yeah, Orleans. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 okay, I'm, yeah. So, Parle français, so. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's good nice. that's good that's sweet man nice. i love nice. it um yeah man so i think that's it we'll say we'll say goodbye and uh, right. and, uh obviously we'll be following you i know i know uh 
Paso Manitoba always does a great job of uh, making sure we stay up to speed. I know it's hard sometimes to like know yeah. who's doing what, but Paso Manitoba always does a great job. And so I know they'll continue to do that and we'll be able to follow you. Yeah, looking forward to it, man. Thanks again for having me. I know it took a while, but we finally got it done. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, man. Take care. All right. See you. All right. Peace. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share this series, and reach out to us with your comments on the show. Thanks again for joining us.